Hi guys, are you here from Blender Bros and in this video we're gonna be modeling sci-fi tire. Let's go. So this tire is gonna be based on a concept uh, from Star Citizen. There's a truck over there called Cyclone and it has really cool tire design. So I wanna create something, you know, in that realm, but uh, with a twist, right? Because when you create something based on some concept, you really want to put some personal spin on it. Otherwise, you're just copying, right? Um, so we're going to take some key features and sort of make them our own a bit. Yeah, so um, before we start, if you are new to Blender, we have a fantastic free course for you. It's called Jumpstart Hard Surface in Blender, downloaded by 20,000 people, and it's absolutely smashing. It will teach you everything you need to know about Blender and how to start with hard surface. And if you're a bit more advanced, you started using add-ons, you probably want to go with another free tool we have. It's called Sci-Fi Terminal Design in Blender. All the links are in the video description, and both courses are free. So now let's start here. Of course, we're going to be working with hard ups, box cutter, machine tools, and mesh machine. All the links to add-ons are in the video description. So uh, let's grab this plane and we're gonna rotate it. Let's apply rotation as uh, so uh, do that. And in fact, we're gonna slice this. So let's go to box cutter and handgun and I'm gonna slice it in here like this. And we're gonna mirror this in here. And we need another cut here going deep um, in this fashion, I think. And possibly I wanna cut something in here as well like this. That looks pretty dope. So let's, uh, you know, visual to mesh. And uh, we're going to bend it with hard up. So before we do that, we need to actually um, add some sub D to it. So let's go to face mode and press Q. Go to dice, all right, press V. And we're going to scroll in to add, you know, quite a few of these quads, all right? Cool. So we got this kind of a dense subdivision here. Now we can bend it, all right? So uh, let's get to let's go to the side view here and uh, we're going to enter the hard ups mode and on the top here you can see uh, there are special modifiers they're called smart modifiers and we're going to click on this to form so we're going to bend it a little bit or sort of curve it around just a little bit we can actually emphasize this a bit more here like that and we're going to apply that okay so visual to mesh now we're going to and what we're going to do, we're going to flip this, so we're going to rotate this on Y by 90 degrees, and we're going to use the same modifier, but remember to apply rotation, and do the same thing, and we're going to bend it the other way, so now we're bending it around here, so it's going to be curved, um, you know, in two sort of uh, ways, right, we could curve this a little bit more, okay, something like that, okay, and uh, maybe actually a bit more, just a little bit more, yeah, so... Hang on a second. There we go. Um, I think this should do. So, a visual to mesh, and we're gonna solidify that. So, let's apply scale, okay, and solidify it. And solidify it outside. Actually, no, inside. It's gonna be easier, I think. You know, something like that. And then we're going to rotate it, holding control, and then RZ90, and in fact, the other way around, like this. Perfect, and move it somewhere here, and we're gonna apply the rotation. So now we have this piece, and what we want to do, in fact, you know what? Well, let's just rotate it this way. I think it's gonna be better. Uh, we're going to move the cursor to origin. We're gonna tilt it just a little bit like that, and again, uh, let's apply rotation, and we're going to uh, array this. So let's go to mesh tools and control click on array, and press X if your uh, axis doesn't fit. Now this is a little bit, uh, a little bit too tilted in my opinion. So what we're gonna do is go to edit mode and tilt it in edit mode until we can actually fit it in. That looks pretty badass to be honest. I really like it. And we could just kind of you know um, scale it in the front. So select this bit here uh, in the front with Control and press O for proportional editing and S X and you can use a mouse wheel to sort of scroll this and we can, you know, sort of play with the shape a little bit here to make it a little bit more interesting, right? A little bit more interesting. In fact, you know what? Let's just select more of it here. So I 
let's just rotate it. Grab this one here and rotate it a bit. Move it forward. And mirror. So it's a kind of custom shape here of this, uh, kind of like a truck, yeah. Uh, we could create some cuts. Um, so hopefully uh, we can cut it in here a little bit. So let's grab the uh, cutter and let's just run the cut on this mesh. Which one is it? This one. So let's grab a cutter and run the cutter here. Press W for a wedge one more time. And we're going to run the wedge here, but not completely. I mean, not full wedge, just, you know, um, to a to a point. And we're going to apply weighted normals to this mesh. What the hell? What is that? Wait a minute. Uh, let's just remove this. There we go. And we should be good to go. So this is kind of interesting. So this is pretty cool. I like it. Uh, we can stick to it. Now what I would like to also do is add some element here. Okay. So just to make it a bit more complicated. So we're going to go a plane. And uh, let's just scale it in. And we're going to move it here. And then we're going to move it up. Right. Right. And uh, we're going to have to rotate it. So Rx rotate it and drop it down. Grab this edge and uh, remove the edge here. These are too long. So GG. Whoa. Let's just turn off the proportion editing. GG. Move it in here. And uh, yeah, we don't need this edge, guys. Um, and then these are. Oh, these are sticking a bit too far. So GG, move them in here, and we're going to um, bend them. So um, let's extrude it on Y axis and drop it down like this, and scale it on X, and GG, move it up here, and we don't need this edge here. Okay, so we can remove this edge, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to curve these. Yeah, so Shift Control B. And we're going to create um, a curve extract out of this, right? So kind of like a possess, the control one, and drop it down here. And GY, move it in. Perfect. And then we're going to, you know, uh, raise this. So Q, uh, let's apply rotation because it usually messes up the, what you call them, uh, the array. Also, what we need to do is apply this, uh, I mean, change D because it's a curve, right? So we need to uh, convert it to geometry, so visual geometry to mesh. And uh, Q, mesh tools, and radial array. And it should fit perfectly with the rotations. This is really cool, sort of an interesting design here. Uh, this could be even brought cl slightly closer inside here. It's going to be a bit more aggressive. I like that. I like that. Awesome. Uh, these uh, could be hidden by two cutters. So when we're going to press... Um, Press Shift 2, so they're going to disappear. So just not delete, move it to cutters. So move it to cutters. There we go. So now we need an interior, right? So Shift A and let's grab a cylinder. We need now a little bit more of these, um, you know, vertices. Let's go with freaking 80. I you know uh, I want it to be smooth. And let's rotate it. Um, so it's actually rotated here. And let's scale it up. And move it in here and then we're going to extrude that and scale it in that's a little bit too much scale it in a little bit yeah and then bring it in here like that and then alt x perfect we're going to add another um, edge here and split it now this one what we're going to do this bit right we're going to shift d that and and we're gonna uh, visual to mesh and we're going to scale this and we're going to rotate it, right? So you're going to see there's going to be some kind of, um, you know, um, secondary layer here underneath. Let's just scale it a little bit more. And it's going to create a bit more of a kind of a breakage of interest here, which is kind of interesting, okay? Technically, you know, you shouldn't be doing it this way because it's going to be a lot of unnecessary geometry. But, uh, you know, no one's watching, so it's cool. Um, all the... <laughs> Old actually could do something like that. I that's cool. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We are riffing, guys. We know we're riffing. We're like properly riffing right now. So here, let's uh, um, mirror this. Let's see what we're gonna get here. Um, 
That's actually pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. You know, it just creates depth to, to this whole, you know, situation, right? So we got that. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to insert these two, right? And we're going to delete them. All right. Not edges, faces. And grab these two edges. So alt click and shift alt click and press 2 with machine tools which will bridge it. Bridge sometimes doesn't work the way I, you know, I want it to in Blender, so I prefer to use machine tools. Now, sharpen this so we get a bit more smoothing, peachy. So here in the middle, we're going to create another cylinder and um, we don't really need 80 here. 60 is going to be fine because it's a smaller one. So let's rotate it and let's scale this as Shift X and make it larger now. We're going to shift D that and make it larger and actually make it wider. That's what I want to do. And uh, cut it with difference. And we're going to run a bevel here so we can actually see that. So there is an edge here. Where is this? Let me see this here. There we go. Let's retrieve the, le retrieve the cutter here. Uh, let's grab this cutter here. Where is it? Come on. And let's make it wider and also um, inset this a little bit and then G, X and move it like this. Okay, so well, that's too much. So we're going to get this kind of opening chamfer here on the side, which looks pretty dope. And uh, this wheel here could have some interesting elements. Okay, so let's inset that. And what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, we could technically grab one of these and shift curve extract. Okay. Uh, kind of like that. Let's see what we're getting um, here. So let's just smooth it. That's cool. And let me think. Um, this could be chamfered here. This is solidified, right? Well, not what I want to do. So let's grab that and sharpen this. And uh, let's chamfer. Well, let's just apply skill here. Let's just share for this. There we go. And that's actually pretty cool. Let's drop this in inside here like that. And in fact, we could uh, we could share for this edge here as well. I think it's going to create some interesting breakage here. Maybe going to have some cool shadows. And of course, we're going to array this. So mesh tools and radial array now. Press X. And we don't need that many. I would, I would say maybe, maybe that many. You know, that's too many. It looks a bit noisy. Maybe five is enough. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. So let's grab that and, you know, uh, scale it and then G, GX and move it in and uh, make this smaller. And actually, you know what? We're going to create another element here. So let's grab that and we're going to uh, cut some circles here. So cut through. I'm going to recover that. So let's scroll and of course we're going to array this. So mesh tools and radial make three. This should do and we can rotate them just a little bit to offset them against other shapes. So it's going to be a bit interesting, right? That looks pretty peachy. Looks pretty peachy. All right. So now another cylinder. Let's make it faulty. RY90 and uh, let's just scale it in. Move it in here on X and sharpen. And then I'm going to actually shift D that, make it larger and difference and scale this one and uh, create something like this. I think this is pretty cool. Now we're going to run some security loops here on this and we're going to run a cut. So go here and, uh, uh, you know, run a cut here. I'll just bevel this or chamfer it. It's going to be a more interesting. There you go and mirror and we're gonna apply this right so sharp and now this cut here is too deep so uh, let's just ever scroll this and i don't want this cut to be so deep there we go that will do and apply that and we need some room here so you know chamfer chamfer so really going to make this thing stand out this needs to be beveled because they too uh, you know they too kind of uh too strong in terms of shape. This one's gonna fall apart on the bevel, probably. Yeah, we could run a procedural here, but you know what? This is not too bad. We can just clean it very quickly. So 
Uh, GG, move this in here, move this in here, move this in here. In fact, this bevel needs a bit of a fixing, so there we go. And also remove the sharps, and then just alt text to the bottom and you, you know, Bob Jonko. Now here, in that center, we could just have another, you know, sort of insertion, so F, F, then insert an E and scale, and we're good to go. And we're gonna get some kind of, uh, you know, it's actually too feeble. Let's make it a bit stronger. Yeah, something like this. Okay, cool. That's better. Awesome. And, you know, this also needs to be beveled. And these should be chamfered. So, chamfer these. These cuts are a bit too dense, but no one's watching, so it's okay. Turn off loop slide, so there's no problem. This bevel is a bit too strong. Drop it down a bit. Like I said, guys, if I'm moving too fast for you, you're in the wrong tutorial, okay? This is not for beginners, so if you, need, you if you are a beginner, you're in the wrong place. Now, this is going to fall apart completely, so probably not something we want to do. So we actually might run a, a bevel here, a procedural bevel, uh, with uh, with KitOps, because I honestly can't be bothered fixing all this. Uh, it's just too much, yeah? I mean, we technically could fix this very quickly. Where is, where is it falling apart? Here, right? So uh, let's grab that and... GG, there you go, and then and Alt X, and then where else? Um, actually, it's not too bad, you know. This should be um, uh, this should be a sharp edge here. So what we can do is uh, not bevel, shift click on sharp, and move to the right until it snaps. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully, it will not affect any other curvatures. No, it's fine. Cool. Um, it's also. Um, a bit a bit vulgar here so what we could do i solidified right cool let's just leave it like that it's cool i don't mind this bit a bit more you know sort of uh rough we could have some cuts here on the side as well right so what we could do is uh run a cut here just for fun like that and run it through so you're gonna get this additional element you know of interest here running on your tires you know you're just stuck in on layers of elements okay cool now here what we need is we need a few things so first of all let's tell them to bugger off to cutters so there we go shift 2 and we're going to add cursor to this element so shift s two face and q and i'll click on asset loader this is kitops and i'm going to be using free inserts with uh, kitops by master zeon and kitops about chip walters uh, links in the video description so we're gonna grab that and add an insert and add it in here. Shift S to cursor, scale it in, move it in. So uh, and expand the size, remove all these mats because we don't need them. Uh, we're gonna be using different mats anyway. So cool. And what else? Oh uh, yes, we could use something on the outside here. We could grab these and shift D them. And move them somewhere here and G, X, and uh, in fact, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna make a new one. So let's grab a cube and let's just move it here. So on the top, and let's just turn this off to individual and scale it in a little bit. And uh, let's apply scale and run the chair for here like this. That's actually pretty cool. And maybe uh, two chamfers here. It's gonna create a lot of. Uh, a lot of interest and another one chamfer here on the top i can't really see that so in fact you know what Let's grab this one and sort of drop it down so gg and drop it down so it kind of aligns with this uh, element here you know i think it's gonna be pretty cool awesome let's just battle this and and then what we can do is uh, you know array this so um uh mesh tools and radial array x and how many we need oh, it's too many man that many will do okay just you know don't overdo it don't overdo it that's pretty cool all right sweet and i think we're almost done we need another sort of an element here but what we can do is grab these two and insert them just a little bit okay and uh you know extrude them like this and scale them a little bit and then actually this looks like shit i don't like it what we're gonna do here is let me think um 
I want something here. All right, um, let's grab a plane and let's rotate it and move it in here. Scale it in, kind of like this. It's still too big, kind of like that. Okay, and move it in here. So, right, and uh, grab these two and GG and move them in here. And then uh, what we're gonna do is E, X, and G, Y, okay? And this is too deep, right? So G, X, okay? And then we're going to scale this on Z, I think this is too big, but uh, GG, maybe something like this. And then we can remove this, um, this one, right? So delete edge. And then grab this and shift control B and alt X and then mesh tools and curve extract. Press S to scale it, to smooth it, sorry. And then control two, right? Actually control one will do. This one is a little bit too um, too sharp here, so we might need to, you know, kind of relax this. A little bit, yeah. Maybe to the other side. This could be a bit too big to be honest, so maybe just not a thick curve and drop it somewhere here and also we could rotate this entire wheel, so, you know, just rotate it a little bit with this, right? So, come on. Select everything. We have everything. Okay. Switch it to cursor and R. Just make sure in, in orthographic mode, yeah? Let's rotate this as well. There we go, right? That looks pretty dope. Cool. This could be actually higher, you know, so this could be higher here. And this could be rotated. Let me see that. Shift S and to geometry. You know what? Uh, let's just grab these and move cursor to the face. And we're going to rotate it on the cursor. So R, X, X. Or R, or X, basically. Yeah, there we go. And just clamp it here like that a little bit. So it's angled, you know. It looks pretty cool. Actually, this is a little bit too far away. It looks weird. Um, so maybe something like this. And you know, we could uh, we could run the macro on this. So alt the macro, sharpen, bevel, and sh I think we should be done, right? Cool, now bevel is catching here, which is kind of irritating, but we can unmark this and we should be fine. Um, let me just relax this a little bit here. Okay, and same here. Well, it should be okay. All right, perfect. You know, this is a cool model, but we could use some badass textures, right? So um, I think we have time to do that very quickly, right? So let me show you how to texture this very easily in, in Blender, okay? Um, we're gonna be using procedural textures from KitOps, and we're gonna be using decals and trim sheets from Blender Bros. You might have heard of them. So let's go here and uh, let's go to um, rendering view, and we're gonna switch here to the noise perfect. If you want to use the noise in the viewport, make sure you're gonna enable it here and make you know change the number of um, the initial start sample to like maybe 30, so you're not gonna get overwhelmed with the noise. In 120 is enough, you know. But I'm not really using uh, the noiser in a viewport, but if that's your thing, go for it. So here we're gonna slap a mod. So um, let's just alt click on that. You need to download the EV and cycles mods by Cheap Walters for GitOps. Link in the video description. They are fantastic mods, and I'll show you a trick how to use them with decals. 
So here we're gonna go and add the, uh, let's go to other and we're gonna add Grime and add the mod and boom. Actually, no, wait, uh, we're gonna add the rubber here. So this one, um, and we're gonna add Grime here. So Grime is gonna be on this one. Cool. We're gonna add Grime here in the middle as well. So, you know, I didn't uh, add mod and um, let me think. Now this could be grime as well, so we can just simply copy mat here. Um, and the one in the bottom could be a different color. So this one could be, for example, titanium uh, or some other metal could be dirty steel. Uh, also gonna work or aluminum uh, or aluminum, wherever you locate it. Personally, I prefer aluminum, but um, suit yourself. Um, this one is a little bit fucking bright. A little bit fucking bright. Let's go here and go to shade editor and let's see value. Where's value here? It's one. Uh, let's just drop. Whoa, that's a bit too dark. Let's just drop it to kind of like a gunmetal aluminum. Yeah. Also, this shouldn't be aluminum. This should be rubber. This should be aluminum. So let's just swap that and this should be rubber. Okay. Um, come on, rubber, add mud, boom, yeah, there we go, peachy, so now, um, the interior here could be also aluminium, yeah, and this one technically could be grime, to be honest, although, you know what, aluminium maybe gonna work, this interior here could be aluminium as well, and this could be rubber, right? And this could be rubber as well, or, or, yeah, I think that or actually, maybe metal. Ah, no, nah, rubber is better. It kind of frames it better because it doesn't destruct from the middle. So this will work. Um, maybe this is a bit too dark, you know, I'm just saying. Maybe something like this. Uh, here we're going to drop another grime. So maybe the blue one and we sort it right now. We have a bit of a problem because, uh, you know, let me just put this plane here, okay? And let me change the rotation, to, I mean orientation to individual. There we go. So now we got a bit of a problem because, you know, it looks cool, but it looks a bit too clinical. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a really neat trick. Let's go here to Asset Loader, let's go to these mods, and you're going to see this um, Advanced Dirty, and you're going to see a Hero mod. So um, let's go here and add an insert, okay, and then cancel with the right mouse button. And this is what we do, we're going to add the mod without adding the insert. So now we're going to add this um, sort of a Hero mod Dirt and Scratches here. So Shift A, Group. And find hero, which is here, and pop it in here. And then you're gonna see this awesome edgeware and you know all kinds of stuff, right? So now we're gonna copy that to uh, to this one. I'll pop it in. Uh, now we don't need edgeware on these uh, on these tires, so we're going to actually darken it down, right? But we're gonna increase the amount of dirt here. So coverage, make it you know make it crazy, right? and make it more muddy so well that's that's a bit too muddy there we go you know a bit dirty right so here uh, we're gonna copy that so Control c and we're gonna edit in here and here technically we could have actually wider edges so you know we could have wider edges here a little bit right but we're gonna lower the amount of of these you know scratches yeah actually you know what darker is gonna be probably a bit better cool awesome so we got that going on same here you know click on that control v and we already have it here cool so now uh these are with dirt perfect everything is peachy cool so now we're gonna run some trim sheets okay and these are by blender bros um um so let's just grab this strip of quads and and let's go to um, the decal machine and you can grab these trim sheets on our website they're really cheap guys like 12 trim sheets and 460 decals for like 
97 dollars you know so it's a joke um uh, here i'll click on this and see what we're gonna get that's too bright i don't like that that is pretty neat actually i kind of dig that that is pretty neat uh same here we're gonna get some um some interesting trim on this um let's just go here and in fact you know what let's want to trim on this one ah there is a there's a cut here so we need to run it like that okay cool that's okay and run that there we go and then we're gonna select this one and then d and repeat that when you repeat a um when you run a, a secondary trim sheet you don't need to what the hell is that merit hops mirror let's apply that alt x now you're talking cool was weird for a second here too we need something so d and you know let's just run some interesting uh, trim sheet like i said when you have trim already running you don't need to press alt just click so make sure you're going to choose the qm qms are textured otherwise it will not work very well for you that's perfect that's perfect i love it okay cool 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 here too we can run something on top so select that uh, grab that and let's just run some crazy stuff here i don't know don't worry we're gonna find something that's not bad actually yeah that, i'm digging that i'm digging that cool awesome and then if you really want to spice this thing up yeah i mean really spice it up well use decals and it's really easy guys so what we can do is we can spice these uh, these buggers here right so where is the main mesh this one okay so here let's go to decals and we can create some kind of a really cool you know effects here so let's grab that wow that's so small and let's just you know let's just uh drop it in here on the side maybe and rotate it so adjust it hold shift and control to find tune it and make sure it aligns with the edge there's i can see already well not project i can see there's some breakage here on the bevel so let's fix that gg done and uh we're gonna have to mirror this to the other side there we go and then grab this again and we could move it somewhere here right? and then adjust the rotation again so it aligns and d and project and then you hold out when you project here yeah? and you move your mouse to project deeper it's actually a bit better and then we can just uh, you know run whatever mat on it so some something darker now we don't have anything in the scene so um oh, hang on a second is this uh, yeah we don't have any, anything in the scene so let's just grab a uh, quad sphere alt m and put some dark mud on it uh, maybe not as reflective there we go and we can just slap this mud on this okay so match d hold shift and should work there you go and you got decal right so this one detail and then we're gonna add another one here so we're gonna add this and let's just grab it in here and rotate it so shift control and rotate it move it in here it's a little bit too big so scale it the out project uh you know mirror and then radial array should work automatically now because it's already set so control click and you're done basically right actually no you're not fascinating I'll try it again and scroll it down a bit there we go this should be fine cool and uh, let's just match it here yeah? so click d and match d and hold shift and you know select the darker tone boom and this is you know you can create some really intricate details on these tires with decals and trims there's literally no point of physically creating geometry because you know it's too, it's too much time right so we could grab this one adjust you know do something like this here really cool element make it smaller and drop it in here adjust it a bit more project it and then the uh, sorry a q uh, mesh tools radial array and i think it's gonna be fine by default yeah you see you got this awesome elements you could have some bolts here on the side or some kind of uh um let me see um these uh, or something like that 
that's gonna look pretty cool here on the side so we could have one then shift d and make this one a bit larger shift d make it a bit larger and actually three will do okay so one two three and then d and project them and then move them to the other side and then um select them and then d match d and hold shift and boom and then you know select all i don't think we can array all of them at once but we can array them one by one okay so mesh tools control array mesh tools and control array okay and you got this pattern in no time yeah see what i mean that's a little bit too noisy i think i'm gonna remove these two one is enough even that actually this one is cool yeah that's pretty that's pretty cool all right sweet and then here we could have something as well you know so uh, we could have some kind of uh, a decal on top of that uh, pff, I don't know you know some kind of a round decal or whatever something here like this and just you know pop it in and did it work if it doesn't work just move it out a little bit so d hold alt and just move it out with alt and then just simply you know click that and go to match and match it now you see that the outer part is not matching the rubber so what you can do is run a glass okay so quad sphere and at the mod go to uh go to the settings here and transmission uh, to max roughness to almost zero and we're gonna rename it to glass i know it's one s but i'm gonna give a shit let's just grab that and d match and then let me see uh, press d and hold shift and then you can match it to glass you see now uh, let me see that glass perfect and then let's rematch the middle one to something dark and then now you have this glass matching the rubber because it gets kind of you know the, the light goes through and it matches what's what's outside right so this is pretty cool guys yeah all right awesome and i think that's it you know i mean it's uh i think we're done oh yes we need to rate this right so here and let's just go here to mesh tools and radial array and we need fewer of them, right? I don't even know how many that we need. Where is it? Here. Um, there we go. And we're done, right? And you got your tire, okay? And then if you want to, for example, have more of these, instead of duplicating the tire, you can create an instance, okay? So watch. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go here to the scene and we're going to duplicate the scene, okay? Copy set and not copy settings. Uh, well... Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, not copy settings, copy the whole thing, so, full copy, yeah, all right, cool, so we got a copy of a scene, so type copy here, so we have two scenes now, okay, you can switch between them, right, it's good for, like, for example, multiple rendering, okay, and uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go here to inserts, I mean, sorry, to the uh, inserts, and also decals later on, but inserts first, and, uh, so we're gonna go here to inserts and decals, and we're gonna press M and move it to collection, okay? In fact, uh, we should move this one as well. And we're done. And now if you go here to um, to add and collection instance, you can create collection instance from collection. So this will take all the, well, wait, 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 we're missing some elements here. Let's just move it to render. Uh, render and turn it off, right? And the rest needs to move to collection. So collection. So add collection instance in collection 001. And it's gonna create a duplicate of this tile with all the all the you know decals, trim sheets, whatever. And it's really fast in terms of movement, okay? So let's grab the plane back and let's create some simple arrangement here. So drop it down and RY90. You know, you want to show your your um, model from different angles. Just make sure that it lays on the floor. G, Shift, Z to move it around. Can I do that? Uh, global individual origins, right? So G, Shift, Z. There we go. Move it somewhere here. Now we need a camera. So let's go here and um, uh, page down and camera to view. And uh, 
let's switch it to 135 I don't know maybe uh, lock to view there we go and can look at low low shot nice give it a bit more ground yeah and this doesn't have to be fully in the picture that's cool um, so what the hell happened uh, page down and unlock from view and we're gonna shift it this it's really easy to do that now right and kind of rotate this a little bit uh, which which way this way right this way here and maybe kind of rotate it a little bit out like this yeah so this one is a main feature and this one's cut off yeah cool this one g shift z and move it forward because we don't need this to be so deep rotate it and make sure that you know you're not clipping it here we could actually extend it a bit so uh, g x x and then e z and then g x x move it in here create infinite background all right and sharpen go to the camera control zero and boom you got the render now settings let's go to my render settings and in fact you know we could add some dirt to this one as well so let's go to shader editor and plug in this dirt so in fact we can add one more so let's go here and get the uh, the um legacy dirt so i call it all dirty but i think it's a folder inside of this advanced dirty you need to find it when you download the uh, the add-on and then Grab this dirty app and add insert and remember cancel this right mouse button. So select this one and shift A and then dirty up and plug it in here. And we can lower down the intensity of these uh, scratches, but you need to um, unlink that mod from other elements. Otherwise, you're going to be adjusting uh, scratches on everything. So click this and let's make the scratches dark. So they're going to disappear and we're going to bump the uh, coverage of dirt. So it's going to modify the mat, make it a bit more dirty. And uh, this one is fine. So this is really cool. Grab the uh, world and we're going to pump the light to 1.4, maybe even higher because it's quite, uh, quite dark skin. And we're going to, you know, rotate this in a way. In fact, I would like to see where the fuck is my light coming from because that's, that's a really tricky um, HGRI. Um, you don't really see where the light is coming from. It's over there. Cool. So we need to rotate it just a little bit. I want the light to be coming from the side. Okay. So somewhere here. That's perfect. You see, light comes from over there. Actually, this is a bit too angled. Maybe somewhere here. So it comes here and bounces back to the camera, which is brilliant. Um, so let's put it transparent. And here, control zero. And how are we looking? Yeah, that's looking fucking sexy. Okay. So you got place for logo here. This is perfect bit more of a you know logo on the top beautiful more um there's quite a space here in the bottom just gonna enter space to the image beautifully framed very strong top cropped i like it this tire could be moved a little bit to the right to be honest i mean i think it's gonna be a bit better hang on it's not in the middle i can feel it there we go also rotate this so it doesn't clip here so i just rotate it a bit yeah there we go and now we can render things gonna be a bit better in terms of visual and framing that dirt on these tires looks legit. That is really bugged as shit, man. Zero UVing, okay? Zero UVing, guys. None. And you know, the cool thing is now that uh, we live in the, in, in the year of Unreal Engine 5, which means even if you have a higher poly, just bring it in, uh, right click in Unreal Engine, and you convert it to nanites. I have a video on that, so go ahead and watch it. How to bring Blender uh, models to Unreal with one click, and then how to bring. Uh, modelist to Unreal and set up all the mats. So, you know, uh, that's a really cool video to uh, to watch. There's one more thing I want to change in the depth of field. I think it's going to be better if we're going to blur this background. We have a quite long lens, which is 135. This should actually compress enough to blur the background. So let's go to camera settings and depth of field. And we're going to set it really low to maybe something like 1.4 which is really even 1.2 would work okay 1.2 that's crazy depth of field and we could focus on this tire uh, this could be a little bit blurry but you see the background is actually falling out now the main feature is this tire this could be a secondary so it could be a bit blurish but we could focus on a specific um on a specific element so let me see 
This one looks... Uh, what the hell has happened here? Let's just Alt-H this. What the hell is happening here? Oh, it's double. Interesting. Um, let's just uh, copy the nut here. Huh. I had a double double knot here. Anyway, um, what you want to do is you want to check if the main main object is kind of sharpish. This one is sharpish. It's fine. And this one's going to be slightly falling out of focus, right? But that's okay. Uh, we could we could actually go to 1.4. I think you're going to be fine with 1.4. And the focus technically could be could be on one of these elements somewhere here or even here. Uh, we could manually focus here, to be honest. So let me see if we're gonna focus manually. Let me see that. Uh, just increase the um, the distance here. Now you wanna wait for the feedback of the of the cycles to clean up because you know you wanna be really sharp in here, right? So you want to wait for. I think it's like 30, 30, 38 is already soft, it's 37, 37 looks sharpish. We could try to set it in EV, it's gonna probably be a bit quicker. Now I can really, you know, zoom in here and see how sharp it is. So, I just saw the camera, right, and then we can fiddle with it, with the distance here see that's already fuzzy that's fuzzy so to find a middle ground that's really sharp okay that's really sharp perfect so switch back to cycles and now we should be fine so this is set for this element which means this is going to be sharp and this is going to be sharp it's going to be slight out of focus but it's supposed to be framing and the background is falling out perfect let's uh, render this again and see what happens it's gonna take more time now because of the depth of field. Yeah, but see now the separation on the tire is so nice. And also tire appears a bit more closer to us because of the blur. So when you're using depth of field, you need to know how to use it, yeah? It's it's a tool, not a toy. So don't use it because it's cool, use it when it matters. This element here is sticking out really pisses me the fuck off, but I'm actually remove it in Photoshop or close this cup here. We will see. But uh, it's not terrible, but kind of annoying this bit here. Um, another thing that uh, I could just rotate this tire and you know it's gonna annoy you, man. It's gonna fucking annoy my OCD. I can't. I, I can't. I have to fix it. Also, this one is a bit too maybe deep in the ground. Maybe 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 tiny bit. Yeah, something like that. And these could be just tiny bit lower. Yeah, you know. And this one could be rotated just a little bit like that. So. This bit here is hidden, that's better. Okay, now, now I can breathe. <laughs> All right, let's try again. When you create render, remember that you're creating, uh, you're creating one render, right? You don't create seven renders, you create one. So do it properly, you know, so you don't have to do it again and again, right? It's gonna be on your portfolio forever. So when you create a render, fucking do it right. Don't be lazy, okay? Why well, cannot set this shit up here? Hang on, there we go. Okay, render is finished. This is looking really good. Now, I wouldn't mind rendering this without a background so I can actually separate it and edit uh, separately, you know, because I can see already that this bit here is a bit bright. So when I'm going to push the contrast and exposure, this is going to be even brighter. You're going to pull attention. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that as a TIFF 16-bit. Some people save in XR file, but to be honest, it doesn't matter really. Um, wheel to YouTube and just let's save that as a TIFF and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to render one more without a background so um, you can just press a dot on the keyboard here turn that shit off uh, in render as well and then we can render this again so render image all right this one can be saved as a PNG doesn't matter so can be 8-bit and save we just need a selection yeah so this is done um, and then what I usually do is I go to this layer orphan data purge everything I don't need 
and then I go here and accelerate the pack. So I'm gonna pack my resources, my all my textures. So if I wanna open it on a different PC or send it to someone, whatever, you know, they get all the textures, including decals, stream sheets, everything. It's gonna be a bit of a bigger file, but who cares? Storage is, storage is cheap. So let's open Photoshop and edit that bitch. Okay, let's bring both in and let me just double click this Photoshop here. We can actually close this blender, we don't need it. And boom. Now grab that, hold shift and drop it on top of this one so they're perfectly aligned, yeah? We just need a selection, okay? So I can hide that. Now, let's just go here to uh, filter and uh, go to camera. It's a bit dark, you can see that. So we need to pump a bit more brightness, yeah, exposure, and also increase shadows, but also pump some clarity and maybe even lift the black point just a little bit. You could push the exposure just a little bit more, okay, so it's quite bright, right? Boom. And I see the background became really bright, right? So we can, what we can do is uh, Control Z, uh, right? And then Control J and then Control Alt F to rerun the filter. So you're gonna have it on a separate layer. And if you wanted to, let's say, remove the background from that equation, click on that, Control click here, and uh, you could actually press shift Control i to invert it. And then you could, uh, you know, uh, run a color on this uh, other black or dark gray. If you run black, everything's gonna go back to the original brightness around the tires, but the tire is gonna be brighter. And that's exactly what we want. We don't want this floor to be more, you know, aggressive because um, to be honest, the blur in the background shouldn't be you know, um, that bright or that, that aggressive. But what we can do now is run a gradient here in the bottom, white one, to reveal part of this ground. So this ground's gonna be a bit brighter. You don't have to do it with full strength. You can grab a brush and lower this, you know, opacity here to like, or fill to like, I don't know, 15 or something. Make the brush softer and sort of like brush off, you know, here in the areas where, where between the tires to bring a bit more attention here to, you know, to the middle. So you're gonna be invited into the image and the rest is gonna be kind of framing the image, right? See my point? See the difference? So, all right, <clears throat> so let's go here and I'm gonna be using uh, my favorite filter in the collection. You can just go to Google and find it. Um, I would suggest you get the Color Effects Pro. We're gonna be using Pro Contrast. Let's reset it to zero. And let's see what we can do in here. Definitely push contrast and uh, maybe even higher here. Creates like a overcast day, but quite bright. And then on top of that, we could add some cross processing. And, you know, this, this actually looks pretty freaking cool. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but we could, you know, we could just pick all kinds of different desks. Actually really cool as well. Looks a bit more realistic. And the cool thing now is that you could, for example, drop a different color in the background, okay? You could make it more cyan. So we could go here to a uh, solid color and we could just go to, you know, kind of like a cyanish, bluish, whatever color, right? And we could just uh, drop it in the background. So um, control click here and shift control I to invert selection and go here and, you know, uh, do that and control I and then what you want to do is mix it by color You see in the background now becomes cyan, but you can reduce the opacity of this, right? So the background is going to be cyanish and now you can remove this effect from the front. So go here and Grab the grid black gradient and run it from the front to the back. So Not white black. That's what I wanted. There we go. So you see like the, 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 the color shifts to the back and the back becomes a little bit less relevant because it becomes more cyan and the tires kind of pop. This is a very cool trick, um, just basically with colors. So there you go, guys, this is it. Now we can put some logo in here in the bottom, no worries. So we can drop, you know, bro stack and, uh, you know, make it darker. Oh, make it brighter. Maybe brighter is better. 
There you go. That's a bit heavy though, you know? That's a bit heavy though. It's a bit heavy. Maybe a small one. You know, unless less inside. Yeah, that's better. Cool. Are we done? Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.